Eugene, we haven't caught up for a few weeks. Um, I think last time you were heading off with Janae over overseas, and um, tell us a little bit about what happened there. Yeah, uh, that part was all the way in Dublin, which is uh, a prick of a place to get to. But it was it's a uh, yeah, I've been to Dublin a few times. It's always been very dreary, but as the sun was out the whole time, it was really nice uh, perspective. And Dublin's, Dublin's is a very nice place, very different city to Auckland, um, but the Irish are great. Uh, the Irish are great uh, MMA um, fighting fans too. And uh, it was just good to get over there. And Bellator was uh, a pleasure to work with. And uh, Janae, Janae had a good fight. Like, uh, I fought, um, I thought she might have scraped the win, but that's like I'm, like I'm, I'll always be the first to say that I can't be trusted. That's why they have judges who are, who are unbiased. Um, but I thought she fought well. I thought she could have done, uh, for sure I thought there was things that she, sh she could have done better, but I thought she might have done enough um, with what she did with uh, her legs and her range and stuff to, at least in the judges' eyes, um, even up the even up the scoring because the other girl was, her shots were more, um, visibly did more damage. Yeah, so, but then Janae, uh, she put a lot of sh uh, shots together that perhaps weren't as um, aesthetically pleasing, but um, she did hurt the girl's lead leg quite badly, and at one stage in the fight, definitely hurt the girl's body. This girl's um, very, very tough, and was very, very good, had a very, very good poker face. But nevertheless, if you're experienced enough, you can see through those things. And I was hoping the judges could see that, and maybe they did. Um, um, maybe they didn't, but um, it, in, in any case, like um, the fight was close enough to go both ways, and if the judges decided to go the other way, then. But what Janae does is though she does. She she, in my opinion, is obviously right up there with those girls because she gives some of those girls some real real trouble, and then what she needs help with is she just needs a little bit of help, just to finish off and round off her game a little bit and just refine it a little bit so that instead of just giving some of those top girls a good, tough go, she can beat them. And she has that potential to do that. Whereas I think some of the tougher girls that she's lost to, they're kind of at the end, they're like closer to their ceiling. Whereas I think Janae, um, she just still has a, as many fights as she's had, um, she, she has a lot of improving to go, like her ceiling's a little bit deeper, so she just needs to do that. So I would hope that the people at Bellator see that and then understand that and then we can um, work those things um, into her future. Uh, like um, the uh, very uh, good and humble coach on the other team says, if you don't win, you learn. And we have to take that lesson, which is a lesson from their team, and uh, that's all we're doing. So we weren't, able, we, weren't made to, we weren't able to take the win on that occasion, but there was plenty of lessons to be taken from it. You, you were telling me earlier uh, a change of tact momentarily anyway for, for your other top female fighter in Jenna Fabian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Jenna, like, so that she was previously contracted with PFL, and then PFL have gotten rid of that uh, 155, 70 kilo division. So she finds herself a little bit uh, like unemployed, I guess, in terms of PFL. So um, PFL are going to go with the division underneath that 145, which is 66 kilos, and that's a, definitely a stretch too far for Jenna to, to make. So she has to kind of um, she has to just reassess the direction or the path of her career a little bit, and I. She's going to start to like seriously pursue uh, boxing uh, at an amateur and a professional level. And um, if you're at, at the amateur level, because you're always 
trying to reach the pinnacle of whatever you're trying to do. I think that's just what you should do if you're a professional athlete at this level. In amateur boxing, uh, it's the Olympics. And in terms of a professional career and that side of boxing, then it's a, it's a world title. So um, that's, I feel like that's going to be the path uh, for her future um, in terms of like just, there still could be some MMA and maybe even some kickboxing in there, but I think most of her attention is probably going to be pointed towards uh, boxing and kind of like rounding off her career with a good, solid run at, uh, at boxing, yeah. Um, of course, the main focus, I guess, on the gym is Izzy's rematch. Yeah. Um, can you tell us how, how his progress is, and, you know, a month out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, progress is, is where it should be. Yeah, it's not when I'm not going to say we're ahead, but I'm not going to say we're behind either. Um, and... I oh, know, it's a, it's exciting, it's exciting, and the reason it's exciting is because it will, a fight like this, with so much on the line, and against such a, uh, a against a, a, such a dangerous opponent, it just puts you on the edge all the time. But it's exciting, uh, also it's exciting in the fact that we have to, um, there's some things that we have to do, there's some things that we have to manipulate and change and do that um, invigorate us as a team of coaches and a team, and also Israel, there's some stuff that he needs to do um, to tweak, and refine, a couple of things he has to add to change the outcome of this uh, match and uh, and that, that's exciting for us like these sort of challenges you gotta understand like this is what we do like this is what we live for we don't like as much as we love um, watching sparring and 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 taking a new fighter for his first fight ever and building them up and and all of that, but what we really live for and what we really do is for this. There's all this team does and this team of coaches and the boys surrounded with this team and all the other teams that are connected to us, like, um, you know, Joe Lopez and Freestyle Fighting and, and, and George and Frank Hickman and with Bang Tao. All we do is live for big fights. And, um, and that's a special environment that we've kind of uh, purposely kind of bred ourselves for up until the, the point we're at now. And uh, so this is just what we love doing. And so, yeah, yeah, it's the pinnacle. This is, this is what we were made for. This is what we were, we, this is what we were put here to do. So um, we're not like shying away. This is something that, that excites us and something that we can't wait to delve into and get into, yeah. You mentioned a couple of uh, gyms there with um, Frank and George Hickman yeah. and, and Joe Lopez and, yeah. and you've got a, another Aussie over here in, yeah. uh, in Benny Johnson. Yeah, 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 Benny Johnson's uh, like, well he's a part of our team really, like he comes over here so often and um, he's been coming over here for, for a couple of years now and uh, he's a good fighter, a real good fighter and uh, a good bloke. And yeah, he comes over here quite a bit, and he he amalgamates with the team really well. Gets on with all the boys, uh, brings a lot of value to the team because he's got a particular, you know, he's got a real particular skill set himself. A very high level uh, striker um, who's got quite a quite a well developed MMA game now. And uh, yeah, and the cool thing about Benny Johnson is he he has a massive gym in Australia, a really really big gym in Queensland. Uh, in the Gold Coast or Brisbane area, Logan, and uh, he's here for Izzy's camp and to help Izzy because he gives us a really good look. Uh, he's a world champion uh, kickboxer, Thai boxer, and uh, very tall and, and long, and he gives us an excellent uh, look for Izzy. So he's here uh, right up until the fight, and he'll come to Miami with us. So, yeah, it's good to have him around.
Uh, there's been a lot of talk around the, um, uh, we talked about it last time, the, the IV and uh, uh, what people have been saying to me is that uh, Alex Pereira is very, very heavy and they just scraped in for the weigh-ins too. Is, is, <laughs> is, is that dead and buried now or is it what, up in the uh, air or what? No, I mean, obviously there was the IV controversy that happened in Pith, but I mean, there's no controversy for us. Like, it's very simple what we, as a team, got some information. We deemed the information good. Okay, we made an assessment of that information. We deemed it good. So then our job now is to pass it on to the proper authorities. And then they take care of it. It's got nothing to do with us. They take care of it, and, that, and they've done that. It's not, you know, like, my, my team doesn't have to, oh, you know, prove it, to, to name who, name them. No, we don't, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. There's proper authorities that take care of this. You just no, don't go on the internet and start, like, you know, telling every little detail about an investigation that's going on. Like, that's just not how it works. Can I ask you if they've got back to you, the, the investigators? No, not yet, not yet. Um, well, not that I know of, like management take care of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so, so all, all, all our job is to, we deem the information good, we pass the information on, and then whoever the, whoever the proper authorities are, uh, take care of it. So in terms of like having to validate that or not, that's not, it's not my job. It's not, not our job to validate that, it's someone else's job. I mean, if people want validation, uh, just use common sense. And what I mean by that is like, this team, whether it be freestyle, bangtail, city kickboxing, we've lost many fights before. We've won many, we've lost many. When we lose, you lose. You suck it up, you lose. Shake the guy's hand, well done, we lost, we weren't good enough. Go away, get better, right? And I think for the most part, we've done that then all of a sudden for one fight, we bring up something. Uh, are we gonna do that because we're sore losers? Because we've been sort of, <laughs> like, like make, a, make a common sense assessment. Volk's brought it up, I've brought it up, Joe's brought it up, Volk has brought it up. So then say to yourself, has this team just all of a sudden gone crazy? <laughs> or all of a sudden become sore losers all of a sudden? Or have we perhaps, are we on to something um, and then, and we're just acting on it in the proper way that you should act on it. Like, man, I, was like, I don't know. It's out of my hands, man. In fact, the boys showed me uh, a week ago, um, their, their team's manager basically admitting that they used an IV and then quickly deleted the post. Now make an assessment on that because obviously he's going to quickly say, turn around and say that he made a mistake or he was drunk or whatever, but Everybody can decide for themselves what happened there, but we just did the we did the right thing um, by us. We got some information, and at the end of the day, like I mean, this team's always been loud and proud when it comes to cheating. If you try and cheat against us, we've had guys miss weight, which is cheating, and we've we've come down hard on it, and we've let everybody know that this guy's cheated. This guy's this is not a win. You could get counted as a win on his record. Like we we come down hard on people, and then equally. When our guys make weight, they get they get just as don't worry, they get just as much shit as everybody else, probably more, because they're our own guys. So like, I don't know. We're just acting like we always act. If you want to do something and cheat against us, then we're what we're a team. We're going to come down. We're going to come down. We're going to defend our team. That's what we do. I got no apologies for that. Don't care. Don't give a shit. I, I know you probably don't go into this sort of thing, but is. Um, do they usually take a time limit when the, when the authorities are looking into this sort of thing? And would you like to see it yeah. um, finalised before Izzy fights again? No, I mean, and, and, and again, I don't really care and I don't really know all that stuff. And then, um, I mean, that what happened there has got nothing to do with Izzy and Pereira and stuff. And there's nothing, like, I will always assume that I would never make an assumption that a fighter cheats. I will always assume that they're not cheating. 
that I think that's just the way to be as a yeah. human being, <laughs> you know, to, to to just take them, take them, take take a person for being good, right? But I also think that the sport operates best when you have an even playing field. Everybody makes the same weight. Everybody has, this, for the most part, the same, you know, training environment. Everybody hops in a ring that's even, has an even surface. That's your side, even my side. Like you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that is the best way for two contestants to figure out who's better. You make everything else equal, you get them in, and then see who performs better on the night. I just think that's just the way it should be. So if you're doing these things to manipulate that balance, then what? Then uh, why? I don't un like. I just don't understand it. You can't then say you're the best. You can go to sleep and you won your trophy or you won your belt or you won, but like you can go away with that. But then how can you go to sleep because you know that you did something that the other person didn't? So how can you? It just it will just be an empty feeling, in my opinion. So I don't know why people do it because then you're gonna then for the rest of your life you're going to know that you're not the best. You didn't win that contest because you didn't keep it in an even playing field. It's just, it, it, well, I don't know, I just don't see the point in it. Um, tell us a little bit about the other fighters uh, uh, on the roster. Um, yeah. Dan Hooker. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dan, unfortunately, um, has the hand. Has it, yeah, lost the hand, uh, injured the hand, so uh, his recovery time, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on his recovery time. He's just going through rehab and stuff and then not sure when of his availability. I know there's something with uh, Kai and Carlos that we can't talk about at the moment, but what about Blood Diamond? Is yeah, I mean, Bloods and Shane, they're just in waiting. Um, they're just in limbo, so they're just in that period where they're waiting. They're in the gym, they're training, which is good. So, um, uh, yeah, no news on them. And then Carlos and Kyle have some news to spread soon. Um, Brad's, Brad's in America. Um, he's got some injuries he's taken care of. Um, yeah. Is he mentioned coming back to the gym? Hey? Brad, is he, is he uh, over retirement? Or? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, nah, nah, I think Brad, but I think Brad's just doing what he needs to do, just have time off and then, he's funny enough has been in the gym a few times. Um, Still training, but yeah, I think he's got some injuries that he really needs to take care of. And while he's kind of taking a hiatus from the sport, is the perfect time to take care of those injuries. So I think he's just doing that. Yeah. The local scene, all of a sudden, we're going to have in a three weeks' time two MMA shows, uh, you know, come yeah. flat, uh, 100 miles apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining because the more opportunities for the guys to fight, the better. So. Um, uh, Shuriken, I've got like six or seven guys on, and then I might uh, have a couple on um, the Cage of Fury, which is Ethan show down in Hamilton, which is they're going to put on a cage, um, which is exciting. Um, <sighs> the sport needs opportunities for guys to fight, and the sport needs more people doing the sport. And when you have more events, you have more people watching it, and you have more encouragement for people to. Uh, join in with the sport as opposed to just watching it. Uh, participation numbers need to go up and I don't know exactly how to solve that problem but I, I don't know. I just Let me just tell people now that it's a wonderful sport, a, a, a very very safe sport, much safer than a lot of the contact sports that some of the mainstream contact sports, much better record in terms of injury and concussion than some of the mainstream sports. A sport that is, uh, uh, has a lot of the martial arts principles and ethics attached to it. So you learn about respect, you learn about that you shouldn't be using your skills that you learn on the street. A lot of these things which aren't really, which, which, which I, I'm not, I'm not going to say they're not a part of the, you know, some of the amateur mainstream sports, but you learn a lot of good values and principles um, when you learn. Um, martial arts and, and the other great thing about mixed martial arts is it's a, it's a weight governed sport so you might be 60 kilos you're not going to be in the rugby team with the 130 kilo person it's all governed by weight you're going to be against people around the same weight and that's another um, 
you know, that, that, that is another, uh, you know, like plus for, for weight governed sports is that you have uh, this very even playing field in terms of athleticism and strength and size. So um, it's not that you don't get that in every sport. So um, that's one of the great positive things about the sport. So you get involved with everybody. Yeah. I encourage people to get the sport. It's a real, it's a, it's a proper path to a very uh, fulfilling career. Yeah. Thanks for the catch up, mate. Appreciate it. And nice. uh, yeah, good to chat. Thanks, cool. Tony. I better get down. I better get down there.